Welcome to the Heal Your Life With Us podcast. I'm Kaylin. And I'm Chrissy. Are you ready to get healing, girl? Let's go. I'm excited about today. Yes, you should be. You're in the hot seat. I am in the hot seat. <laughs> I have a big, giant, like, light being shown on me right now. <laughs> you do. You do. And it's totally okay. It's the first time in, like, 18 episodes. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, today, we are talking about the S word, self hair. Okay. So it's everywhere. Y'all know it. It's the buzzword. It's the thing that you're supposed to do and know how to do. And if you don't do it, you will crumble and all of the things that go with self-care. But we recently found out that there are many different forms of self-care and there are things that we think are self-care that are really not. And what happens when you don't do them. So we're going to share a little bit of our own ups and downs with them. I am not really amazing at it, but I am definitely getting better. This last year, I have put it in the forefront. I have made it a priority and I have seen amazing benefits from it. So first let's talk about what it is and what it is not. So Chrissy, what is self-care in your eyes? Okay, do you want to know what self-care is, what I used to think it is, or what it yeah, really is? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's do what you used to think it is, yeah. Okay, self-care to me used to be, let me get everything done on my to-do list. Let me get accomplished, right? Let me feel like I can breathe, like everything is done. Like, that's that was self-care to me. That was like, on my day off, I'm just like, okay, I have all these tasks to do let me go get them all done because I didn't do them all week and I'll feel better about it. And I'll be, I'll feel better when I'm done, but I actually don't feel better when I'm done. I feel freaking exhausted. And you've just added six more things to your list. <laughs> yeah. Self-care used to be to me sitting in my robe, playing video games for like three hours and eating chips and not answering answering emails, I think, or, you know, not doing the chores or like not doing dishes. Sometimes I guess it would be maybe like getting a massage. I consider that maybe a little bit of self-care, which I rarely did. Uh, a lot of people feel like getting their nails done is self-care and it can be a form of self-care, right? A physical self-care, right? Or, you know, even just, I don't know, taking a walk, I think. But uh, what is self-care really? Like deep down, what would you say is probably the number one thing that self-care is to you? Okay. Now it's putting myself first before everyone else for a certain amount of time. And it took her a lot to get there guys. <laughs> like a lot. Like She still doesn't do it all the time either. I'm like, I don't remember. Do it no, I don't do it all the time. It's so hard for me. Also being an Enneagram one, I do it better than everybody else and everybody can't do it good. So that's something I struggle with too, just being that number. Um, so it's like, I have the Enneagram one and then I have self-care at the same time. Great. Those two don't go together. It, I just want to always do everything. So right. what it is, it's about taking, uh, putting yourself first, you first before anything else or anyone else for a specific amount of time. And that's not selfish. Like you feel selfish when you do that. That's why we don't do it is because we're like, well, that's just being selfish. It's actually not, it's being selfless, right? So there are so many different forms of self-care I just learned too, which is really interesting. Um, and we'll talk about that. But I guess my version now of self-care is yes, putting putting myself first, but also listening to what I need to do in the moment and actually doing it without guilt. So if I need to say no to something to better my mental health in the moment, I need to say no. It means if I need to work from the bed because my body is not at you know peak capacity that day, I need to listen to that. If it means showing up and speaking my truth in a confrontational situation, I need to listen to that. And I need to do it without guilt, like free of all the chains of don't do that. Don't say that you have to be this person. You have to be that person. I need to be my true authentic self. And that is care for myself. Right? So there's so many different kinds and we're going to talk a little bit about each. 
So first there is mental self-care. So taking care of the mind. Then we have emotional self-care, taking care of your emotions. Then we have spiritual self-care, you know, connecting to our inner selves, finding purpose in our life, our higher power. Then there is social self-care, making time to connect with others. Then there is professional self-care, right? Balancing your work and your life environment. And then there is practical self-care, your day-to-day, -day, taking care of your life and your responsibilities, which is my least favorite one, okay? But so taking care of your mind, let's do the top of the list here. Mental self-care, what do you do to take care of your mind? I meditate. I have to get into a space where my mind's not talking to me anymore. So for me, that's usually like guided meditations, rain music, or drumming. That those mm. are the only sounds that can like take me out of my own mind and like put me somewhere else and, and just like guide me to like relax and just calm the mind down. I love that. Yeah. Drumming makes me feel like, I don't know, pop. <laughs> Uh, yes. Meditation for me as well. So I am so excited too. This is just a sweet little segue that I didn't know was going to happen, but I just obtained my mindful medication medication. Yeah, definitely medication. Yes. <laughs> as you can see, I'm really good at this. Um, <laughs> mindful meditation certification. I mean, yes. it is a mindful, uh, which I have been training for three months and literally doing a lifetime of meditations. I started meditation when I moved to Georgia. Uh, I think it was so 18 years. We're going on 19 years that I've been meditating. It's one of the only things that actually can take me out of my mind, right? And help me to release some of the pains of my body. And now currently I meditate three times a day. I, my big one is in the morning, like big, like I go hard at least, you know, half an hour minimum. And I do different ones. Sometimes I do guided. Sometimes I just put mu music on and do myself and always is with breath work. And then lunch, I make sure I get five to 10 minutes at least, usually grounding outside. And then at night I do another big one that's maybe 20 to 40 minutes of just letting go of the day and major benefits from, from this, like major so much that I got a certification. So now I can teach others, but I'm, I really, really, a, a, you know, make, want people to get to the level where you make time for it for sure. Yeah. yeah. I feel like yoga is also another one for me, mind, mind wise, mentally. I think that could be also like a physical one, but I think it's for me, it's mind because I'm not really thinking about anything else when I'm doing yoga. I'm kind of trying to like breathe and get into that pose and get deeper into that pose. So I would say meditation and yoga are on my list of mental. Yeah, same. It's harder for me with yoga because I, my mind goes, right? So that's a good challenge for sure. All right. Emotional self-care. This one's deep and tough. Uh, emotions. Yeah. So how do you work on your emotions oh um I don't even know they just, I do I know okay, you. okay so you know you know you How know do you don't you know you you cry it out okay yeah I do yeah I don't hold anything in I like let it out like it's you do. gonna come out like a river yeah and yeah, then it, like, you're really good at it. And I'm like okay emotions are right now. let's go about our day you're really good at it. I am not good at it at all. I was like, hold it in, hold it in, hold it in, hold it in. So cry it out for sure. And now I'm learning to journal it out. Uh, that as a writer by trade, it's wow, cathartic. Like sometimes when I'm writing, I'm like, who is writing this? Like, where is this coming from? It's insane yeah. what is even flowing through me. And sometimes I'm like, this is really poetic. Like <laughs> this could be a book and it will be, but, um, journaling for sure. I'm learning to cry it out. Not my favorite <laughs> it gives me pain, but it is less and less pain every time, but I am learning to cry it out. Um, I have a problem crying in front of people. So like, it's more of a do it by myself thing, which Chrissy's like, just cry. Like it's fine, but I I'm working on it. So yeah. Emotions are tough so like, I, I would say that they're probably the most painful ones they're just yeah. not my that's not my favorite self-care category no for <laughs> sure you have to process and express 
So yeah. just remember those two words to take care of your emotions. You have to process and express. If you are burying them deep, deep down, they will come back and haunt you. Yeah. They will literally haunt your dreams. So just process and express. Okay. Yeah. Whatever that means to you. Yeah. All right. This one's one of our favorites, spiritual care, which we are on this amazing journey and I'm so grateful for it. So what do you do for your spiritual self-care? What don't I do? I feel like that's the longest list. <laughs> everything I do We're doing everything. it right now. Like. Yeah, I I do um, Reiki. You know, I get Reiki. Uh, I feel like kind of massage kind of falls in there too because I get spiritual when I get massage. Um, and then I get Reiki and massage at the same time. Sound healing. Um, I mean, I go to card readers. I go to psychics. I go to all of them. Like every single person who's spiritual, who has like a gift or something they can share with me. Like I'm... Um, I'm open ears. I want to know everyone and I want to know everything. And I want to, I want to learn about your gifts. So spiritually, like I do everything. She's talking to animals, people like talking to furniture. Like I like your energy share. Yeah. Yeah. Like I am just all about that energy. So for me, energy is like spiritual and it's like anything or a person that I can get into that world with, I'm in. I'm like, yeah. I probably have an A plus in that category of self. Yeah, for sure you do. <laughs> yep, A plus. Good, good job, Chrissy. Yeah, and you're a part of a church group and we have yeah. our amazing power of eight group that yeah. that we have. I mean, we have so many spiritual souls on this journey. It's like, it's sometimes, sometimes it just, mm, it just chokes me up. It's the me best. Me too. Yeah, I love it because I love people and I love like learning about people and like everything that everyone loves and believes and just I want to know about it all because yeah. I like love all of it and I accept all of it and I'm just open to all of it. So I, I love it. I'm the same as you, same exact as you. And I'm just over here soaking in your light like all day, like so for me, I think honestly, it is the people on the journey. It's the, it's the sound healing. It's the Reiki. It's the praying. It's the manifesting. It's the connection to your spirit. I had, I just, I just found out I had a spirit like two years ago. Like I was like, this has been in me this whole time. Oh, Hey girl, like, what's up? You want to hang out? So I'm just now learning to let my spirit guide me. And instead of just, you know, using my logic and my brain and my head all the time I am finally leaning into my spirit and it's pretty magical it's very creative and the path has been very fun which I'm an Enneagram 7 so I love fun so I'm just getting in tune with my own spirit which has been pretty cool I've been you know obviously part of a, a bigger thing my whole life but really owning it this year and last year has been been awesome. So take the time to tune into your spirit and other people's spirit is I think the takeaway there. It is. And I feel like we both have been working on that really diligently in the last two years. Just, I mean, I mean, I always knew I had a spirit, but I think that I opened her up and I like, yeah, I let her out and I'm learning about so many other people and other people's spirits and other people's journeys. And, um, yeah, it's probably my favorite. It is. And you made me not afraid of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you were like, no, just trust it. Just go with it. Like feel it. And it was like, kind of just like opening up this place in me that I was like, are you sure? Like, I'm really doubtful. And, you know, I think just having those other people on your journey really helps Yeah, because they're doing it and you're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Right. You know? So if it's normal for them, I mean, there is something to be said for those that are woo woo and the weird and we're over it guys. Like we're in, so we're done, you know, blocking our throat chakras for y'all. Like we're out there. So this is what we're we're open to everybody and every idea and every concept and every single belief, because, um, I think we just met somebody who said this the other day, she doesn't really know what she believes in because every day she learns something new. Yes. So I was like, that is such a good way of putting it because I, I literally learned something new from somebody every single day. And I'm like, that just adds on to something I already knew. So it, who knows how much stuff we're going to know when we're like 95. Right. Right. It's going to be like glowing orbs by the time we're 95. Yeah. We're going to have like 700 million followers when we're 95 <laughs> doing this podcast. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. All right. Social self-care. This has been a journey for me, man. Woo-wee. 
I had social self-care coming out of my ears when I was younger, but uh, it's definitely morphed and changed for me growing older. Uh, what do you do? Chrissy, you do so much for your self social self-care. I'm like, girl, whoa, you do a lot. Yeah, I know. That's not your, so Caitlin likes to have like three, like three, maybe close friends. And like, she doesn't like anything else. Like she's like, Going out to dinner? No. A party? No, thanks. Um, no, I'll just... Which is so funny. I used to go to everything. <laughs> and everything. Then, I'm like, okay, so next Saturday I have dinner plans with this person. I've got coffee with yeah. this person in the middle of the week. I've got a party after that. I've got two parties on this day. Um, I've got six people coming over for dinner on this day, and I love it. And Chrissy's booked out till 2029, y'all. I am. So if you want to hang out with me, grab a weekend because <laughs> it's hard to get in. It's seriously hard to get in. And I love that um, because, and I don't know if this makes me part of my projector of my human design, but I don't make my own energy as a projector and I take other people's energy, right? So I think that's why I always want to be around people. That's always why I want to learn from different people. And I want to be in social and social situations because I'm always taking the energy, the energy I want from those social situations. And I like learning from people. So the more people I can put myself around to learn something new, that's why kind of why I do it. So yep. socially, Caitlin tells me, simmer it down, Chrissy. It's like two right. notches. Yeah, simmer it down. Yes. Just because you're not making room for your own self-care when you're filling up your schedule. Like busy for busyness sake is not productive. It's just like switching between tabs. You need to make sure that it's like, quality energy that you're surrounding yourself with and it's quality over quantity these days, right? Like time is precious. So the way that I look at it is when I'm in a social situation, I go all in, right? Like I am fully present with you. I am giving you all of Kaylin. And that is like usually 110%. And usually my battery's already at like an 80% because of my pain. And so when I go hard, I crash hard after. So after I'm at a social event, no matter how, how big or how small, I usually have to come down and then build myself back up because I'm not an energy manifester myself. I literally am absorbing the people in the room, like triple probably what you're absorbing. And so it's like, I guess, processing that energy before and after. Like, I love when I'm out there and I love that I'm connecting and having these moments and experiences. And and then when I'm home, I'm like, dang, like I am just tired. And so it's, it's a balance between how much I can fit in. And I'm one of those people that's like, let's schedule it. Let's do the scheduling. And then the day comes and I'm like, oh, I'm in my robe and I don't <laughs> want to go. And let's just watch it up. Like, so I know y'all are like that too. Don't even lie about it. But yeah. when you go, it's like amazing. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there is that amazingness. And when I'm in there and I'm meeting the people, I'm like, this is why I went, right. This is yeah. why I went. So and I tell you that all the time, cause you'll, you'll complain about three, th three to four hours before the event actually happens. And I get like 14 text messages about the seven excuses you want to give me why you're not going. And then right. I just keep telling you how much fun it's going to be and how amazing it's going to be. And then you text me literally 13 seconds after the event. And you're like, that was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. Begrudgingly. I'm like, you were right again. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I take time to slow down a little bit, you know, like yes. Saturday, I ain't got nothing on the calendar. I can do whatever I want. Right. Yeah. So, and we're going to get to that, Chrissy. I'm not letting you off the hook. Okay. All right. <laughs> Two more <laughs> professional self-care. So this is when I really had to learn, whoa, I was like, I put work first before everything growing up. I mean, there were times I had three jobs and then I worked weekends and I was like, I can fit it in. I can do it. I can do my hustle. I can do this. And that didn't last very long for my mental and my physical health. So I found the work-life balance came to me through remote work. Thank God. So grateful for remote work. Um, I will never go back to an office because this is who I am. I have to have this space and I'm able to do the things and have the work-life balance. Um, for those of you that are out there in the field and doing the labor, God bless your souls. I just do not have the capacity. So professional self-care is a thing, like take the days off, take the time, take a half day, take the lunch break, 
start your day, right? Like take the time because you're going to go back and you're going to be balanced for your workflow. So that's my only piece of advice. Yeah. I, um, definitely experienced that in my other two careers that I had doing nails. I used to just squeeze people in and squeeze people in and throw people here and a polish change here. And, you know, not getting your nails done is pretty detrimental to some people. So, and I'd feel the guilt of that. So I would, you know, squeeze somebody in and I'd be exhausted at the end of the day. Cause I didn't take any time for me. I might not have eaten lunch. Right. And so I did that for seven years. And then for eight years I did real estate and it's like, it's go, 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 go. So it's like, if there's 13 houses, you're going to see, you're literally going to jump from one house to the other. You're shoving food in your mouth as you're driving. There's no self-care at all. Um, especially in the crazy real estate market. And then now I figured it out. You did. Now you make your own schedule. I make my own schedule. I mean, I made my own schedule before, but I really make my own schedule now because it is so important for me to have my battery full and to have my energy levels up in all aspects. So whether that's nutrition, whether that's sleep, whether that's mental self-care, whatever it is, because I'm, helping to heal others. So if my battery is not at 110%, I can't help to heal somebody else whose battery is at 30%. And we had to figure this out about you because when you first started Reiki, you were like, okay, I need to ground after, and I need to replenish after I need to take a walk. Like we had to get up an aftercare, you know, protocol together for you because you were absorbing that energy. So I was crashing um, and I was not having enough energy for the next person to come in and, and help that person. So I figured all that out pretty quickly, actually. And now it's like, I base my appointments on, I there's, they're not back to back. There's space in between. Cause I eat because yep. I ground, because I go in the sun, because I, I, you know, get into my zone for the next person. I, I cleanse that last person off. So the next person has space to, yes. have, you know, to have, to be given healing. And so I learned that. And now, yeah. I, now it feels so good, like to have that professional, like self-care. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like literally the most important thing because we're programmed to just work, 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 and don't take the lunches and do all the things. And since I've been actually taking my lunch breaks and doing it, it's like, those are my moments to look forward to in my day. Right. So you got to have those little joyous pockets. Right. Um, so, all right, last one, practical self care. So the practicalness is like, your chores, your responsibilities. You got to do the laundry, got to do the dishes, got to take the garbage out. You got to do, you know, all of the things that are part of life, but you can't do too much, too, like all of the time, because there needs to be joy in there. There needs to be social in there. There needs to be self. So it's a balance between understanding when to do them. Like for instance, for me on Saturday, I like water my plants. And I, you know, I try to put some music on while I'm doing it. You know, if I have to like do the vacuuming, I'm, you know, inserting some music and dancing around with it instead of just like rushing through it, having it hurt my hip. Like, I mean, I hate doing this, you know, and like, I don't rush to do all the dishes all the time. Like if it sits there for a minute, it's okay. Right. Like it's going to get done. So there's like this push and pull of responsibilities. And also as you know, women and the caretakers of your home, you might feel this pressure really, really hard. So I'd love to hear how y'all manage this practical self-care out there, the women doing it all with the kids and the jobs and the husbands. I mean, y'all are really doing it. Yeah, you are doing it. So I think like one of the biggest tips I can give for the practical self-care is delegate and not take it all on yourself. So have, you know, help doing laundry, have help cleaning the bathrooms, have help doing the dishes, have help cooking the dinners, things like that. Do it, do the things that are, you know, that you love doing that you want to do. Like for me, that would be cooking. The least favorite thing I like to do is dishes. So, and I like doing laundry. So it's like cooking and laundry. Those would be my fun things. And then, like you said, add in those fun things, listen to music, listen to a podcast, do something fun for yourself while you're doing those tasks, but delegate the ones you don't like. Definitely delegate. Do you, are you, is it easy for you to delegate? No. 
I'm an Enneagram one. No, it's terrible. I'm like, why are you folding the socks like that? That's not how the, that's not how the socks get folded. Why are you mixing the cheese like that? Why the cheese doesn't go in first, the cheese goes in second. And it's like, I can't not de- like, I can't not do it better. That's how I am. So, but I do have to like, if someone has a job, I walk away. I don't care how the dishes get loaded in the dishwasher. I could give two poops about it because I hate dishes. <laughs> I do care how the dishwasher is loaded. I will sit there and rearrange it like a psycho. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> and Matt will do the same thing. Matt will come in and if, if, I've, if I've done it, he'd be like, no, we're gonna that's so it. funny. Yeah. I think I knew that about you with the dishes. Um, so just find the time to, I don't know, make things happen on your time. Right. I mean, sometimes you feel like you can't fit it all in your day. Sometimes the to-do list is long. Like, how are you going to do all of this self-care in one day? And it just comes to you, right? Like Chrissy and I wake up pretty early to get some of these things done. Right. We're up at like five 30 texting each other. Like, are you ready for today, girl? Like we're doing it all. So sometimes you just have to go. And then sometimes you don't. And then sometimes you flow with it. And if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. As long as you're feeling good about it, that is self-care. Right. So Listen, listen, listen. Yes. Okay, we're going to tell a fun little tale about (laughs) Chrissy Rice not listening to the universe when it told her to slow down so many times. Thrice, in fact. Yeah. Thrice times it told her to slow down and she did not listen and said, I'm an Enneagram One, I can do it all. And what happened? And I went spiraling downwards and I crashed and I took a very long time to get back up a very long time. You, she doesn't crash. I've never, I've been friends with her for a very long time. Chrissy doesn't crash. Like no. you'll be like, Oh my gosh, this girl is still going like energizer bunny. Like yes. how, when does she rest? Okay. She crashed. I crashed. Yes, I did. The universe was like, um, maybe you shouldn't do this today. I think you need to like relax and you need to do this instead. And I was like, wait, what? No, I'm going to keep doing this. Okay. So you're going to do this. And then something else came up and it was like, you shouldn't do this. You should go relax. Okay. You should go relax because you haven't relaxed in a really long time. You're going to crash, Chrissy. You're going to crash. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to crash. I'm fine. Just put another battery in Let's keep going. And then literally I, the world flipped upside down. I physically flipped upside down and I got vertigo and the universe was like, Hey, now you're going to sit down because yeah. I couldn't even move. And we it, told you to sit down and you didn't sit down. Yeah. And it was like three signs to yeah. tell me to sit down and just soak in the moment and to just take care of yourself. Right. And I thought I was taking care of myself and I wasn't and I crashed and it took me like three full days, which seems like an eternity for me because mm-hmm. I like to do a thousand things a day and three full days to like totally recover and totally get back to like normal Chrissy. Yeah. So if and I don't listen, I'm going down. <laughs> and you aren't the only one girl, no. like literally friends were canceling with you. And she was like, who else is available? Why can't we still go out? Like, I still need this. And I'm like, girl, this is the universe telling you to stay home. Like, just get your slippers on, just pop some popcorn, like get in it, girl. Like, what are you doing? And you still went out and stuff. And, and I remember when you, the next morning I could feel like something was wrong. I was like, where's the morning novel on my text? Like, there's not, there's not, where's the energy. And then you were like, Kaylin, I'm down. I'm down. I'm at like 63%. I can't, I can't. And I'm like, <laughs> I wanted so bad to be like, girl, I told you so I told you three times. And I wasn't, I was like, okay, it's time to ground. We got to pull our tools out. Like, let's go, like get the lawn chair. You're going in the front yard. Like you're going to put your feet in the ground. You're going to stare at the sun. That's all you're doing today. Cancel your plans. And she was just like, okay, finally I will do that. And I got to tell you from that day or the three days that like you said, so much good things have happened. So many good things have happened. It's unbelievable how many good things have happened. And I often forget that when I do slow down, all this amazing stuff comes flying at me. And when I'm moving constantly and I'm like the Energizer Bunny and I'm just go, go, go. I am missing. They're flying right past me. That's it. Catching them. That's exactly, exactly it. 
And slowing down is not a waste of time. It is not laziness. It is not sloth. It is, it is part of self-care. Slowing down is not, I don't know, four or five days. It's a couple of hours in the day. It's an hour. It's a, it's maybe a whole day. If you can squeeze it, it's part of really, truly listening when you need it. And if you get the signs, like Christy got the signs, listen to them so that you can actually do it and see what happens because new insights will come in from that. You know, there's some crazy quote that's like in the silence, all the things come to you, right? Like the moment that you take a minute, you know, you, you learn what you really need to know. And I'm really starting to value that for sure. So just slow down sometimes and listen. And we had to create a a self-care like protocol for Chrissy. I was like, okay, Chrissy, I'm not doing this again. Like (laughs) we're not going to let you go down again. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to pick a day and you are going to do this, this, and this on this day. You're not allowed to put your makeup on. You got to stay in the robe for three hours. You are going to journal and you're going to sit in the sun and you're going to make the smoothies and you're going to listen to the music and you're going to dance in the kitchen and you're going to hug your husband. And that's it. Like, that's your plan. Right. And she was like, okay. And I don't know that she's actually been able to do it yet, but she's trying and that's all that matters. Um, at least a few hours, um, and just get back to that crystal mat girl and just, and just lay down. So that is kind of where I go. I go to my self care. I lay on my heated crystal mat and it just kind of like, I don't know, makes me feel amazing. So that's like my self care is just laying on that thing for even an hour. And we're back to our morning routines. We're doing the things. She's got her yoga back in her life, right? I've got my meditation, like we're doing it, but sometimes life just gets crazy. So just listening to that is key. So that is your self-care wrap up. Uh, Do a little self-care audit for yourself. Figure out what you're doing, what you're not doing, what you want to incorporate. And if someone says, what are you doing today? And you don't want to do anything that's great. You're doing it. You're doing it. Uh, and see what comes up. I think you'll be surprised. Yeah. Sit in the silence just for a little while because things get thrown at you and you're, you're able to catch them. Yes. All right, y'all another great episode. Love it so much. Thank you so much for all of your love and all of your comments. I mean, we just passed like 38,000 views on YouTube and we are floored by you. So y'all keep us going. Y'all are our self-care, right? So this is like, just thank you for that. Thank you. Um, This is self-care for Kaylin and I. Yeah, literally. (laughs) So thanks. And um, we have so much more goodness to come. And the Heal Your Life With Us Empire is growing. Stay tuned for our events. Find us on Instagram at Heal Your Life Podcast. And I'm at CBC Inked. And I'm C H R 1 S S Y underscore Rice, R I C E on Instagram. All right, y'all. Happy healing. Yes. Thank you.